we're going to go ahead and kick things off. Uh, just so you all know the format here, uh, think of this like a startup pitch contest. But instead of a startup, which is boring and old school, um, we're, we're going to talk about DAOs. And what is your dream DAO? It doesn't, it, it doesn't have to actually exist yet. Getting a little bit of reverberation. Yeah, a lot of it. Mm. Uh, it, it do, the DAO doesn't have to actually exist yet. But the, the hope is that if, if you actually win the pitch contest tonight, we want you to make a real effort to bring your DAO into reality. And, and we're going to give you a little bit of C funding with DAI and A&T to try to help make that happen. And of course, we have a very welcoming and loving and supportive community at Aragon. And I'm sure if you uh, spend time in our chat room and our, or our forum, we'll have other folks who want to jump in and help too. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our lovely judges for this evening. We have on the far left, Simona Pop from Bounties Network. I want to give a shout out to Bounties Network because we actually use Bounties Network to help uh, staff the event tonight with our lovely greeters at the front door who are helping to, you know, make sure that we can stay comfortable and make sure that everybody's welcomed warmly into the event here. So thank you to Bounties Network. Um, second, we have Maria Paula Gomez, the steward of the Aragon Nest program, which is the Aragon's grants program. Um, and she's done such a wonderful job with that. Big round of applause for Maria. And then last, but certainly not least, one of the most loved and cherished individuals in the Ethereum space, in, in the world, I will even say. <laughs> Griff Green from Giveth. And Aragon DAC, because we're all a big, happy Aragon family here. With the introductions of the judges out of the way, I only have myself to introduce. My name is John Light. I work on the community team at Aragon. I helped organize this event. Um, if you have any questions or have any needs or concerns or anything, please just find me. I'll try to be available walking around, talking to people all night. So just come find me and we'll try to figure out a solution to whatever it is. <clears throat> and, and, and to the folks who didn't sign up on Kickback but got in anyways, welcome. Okay. Welcome to our event. <laughs> we, we're super glad that you showed up uh, to, to, to witness this incredible <laughs> landmark event for the Aragon community. Without any further ado, I have the very first pitch of our Aragon Dream Dow pitch contest. Wild Molasses oh, yeah. pitching Doc Dow. Wild Molasses, are you in the building? Hey. Excellent. Yeah. Welcome Wild Molasses to the stage. Can you hear me? Ah! Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks everybody. Thanks Aragon for hosting. Uh, hey, uh, so my dream DAO. Uh, well, my dream is documentation in the space. And uh, doc DAO, doc DAO, doc DAO. Uh, and uh, so my dream DAO would somehow uh, document lib peer to peer because I'm having trouble understanding this project right now. I'd really love some more documentation around it. So how can we get this problem solved? Uh, well, we could make a DAO. And we can incentivize people who want to do documentation. Uh, we can incentivize people who, uh, developers who want to help with documentation but may just not have the bandwidth themselves. And um, so are you guys feeling this so far? I don't know. Documentation? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, okay, the particulars as to 
how it could work. So, um, yeah, so we'd we'd have a community, and the community would, um, yeah, I just came up with this 15 minutes ago. Oh, yeah, but, uh, oh, shit. Can you guys help me out? Do you guys have an idea for how this would work? No, uh, uh, I'm just kidding. Okay, so people who want to do documentation, or people who want documentation, that's where we start. Uh, we all come together and we say, what projects do we want documentation for? And so, you know, everybody says, oh, live peer to peer. And so then we all say, okay, great. Uh, so are you willing to contribute uh, some ETH or some whatever to, in order to back this effort? And so we all get together, we decide what should be um, contributed towards, and then we post a bounty, okay? And so we figure that out. And part of the bounty, it's not just ETH, but it's also um, uh, capital within our DAO. So, you know, not only are you getting, um, you know, money to, to contribute to this documentation effort, but you're also getting some stake in our community. So now, I mean, this isn't going to be the only project that uh, you're interested in documentation for. Or if you're a developer that's willing to help out somebody that's documenting, then you're going to have a project after this that also needs documentation. So this community can grow like that. Uh, I think that pretty much outlines what I'm trying to say. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, cool. Yes, Griff. How do you make the decision? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, so I have. Um, experimented with the Aragon DAO, right? So so there's voting. And uh, I clicked the voting button when I signed up and not the democracy button. So I'm only familiar with the voting part. But I know that the stakeholders can uh, vote amongst themselves on as far as what they want to fund. Or you, know, you can um, offer any vote. You can put any vote to quorum if you have the sufficient uh, privileges. So yeah. You have another question, Griff? I have some more, yeah. But yeah, please. Oh. You've got two minutes. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, how do you do initial token distribution? And then is it 51% or what's the quorum? And what's the, you know, how, like, the yeah. details on the decision? Yeah, uh, initial token distribution would be, it would come from the community who wants documentation. So if you're going to, if you want documentation, then you buy into this DAO. And that's where the seed comes from. And so you guys put your proposal out, and then the community grows from there, kind of like you know the people that are doing the documentation, the developers that are helping the people do the documentation, the stake grows, the pool grows, and so then it moves from there. You guys got any uh, I got, I got more. So okay, <laughs> you, you send, you send some ether in, right, and you get some tokens back, and then. You also are creating tokens when documentation is done for the people, like in a bounty. Do you imagine there being a percentage at the beginning and a percentage being emitted at a certain rate or anything like that? Uh, a percentage as in, do, do the people that are maybe doing the documentation to fill the bounty, do, do they get anything up front, kind of? More like uh, how many tokens are emitted when bounties are done? Uh. How much is the initial supply, you know? There's like yeah, the way I was thinking of it in my simple mind was that uh, as much like ETH as you might get for filling the bounty, you get that much. Uh, like there would be some kind of just easy multiplier that, you know, oh, you get that much also in this DAO's tokens. And so that would keep things simple and, uh, you know, hopefully work out. <laughs> yeah, that multiplier could even be the first proposal of the DAO. Mm, true. Okay. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. All right. So the next pitch of the Aragon Dream DAO pitch contest is going to be Max with MG. Woo! Hi, everybody. Can you hear me well? Cool. Uh, so I'm Max Apiari. It's not my real last name. 
but <laughs> that's how they let me in here. And uh, yeah, basically MG is uh, matching gifts. So it's idea from the charity, and I'm feeling to grief here. So um, matching gifts, if you don't know, it's uh, the system uh, applied by the corporations, uh, so they have a fund. And uh, whenever somebody of their employees donates to some specific charity, they kind of match the same funds to, to the charity. So if somebody, like one employee sends $100, they do the same up to the limit of $1,500. And this is a really big thing. You know, like uh, Apple is in it, Google, Facebook, and so on. So there's like gazillions of dollars there. And why is better than just direct investing? Like what? Direct charity? Direct charity? Uh, is that, well, first of all, uh, there's some like curation because like uh, the uh, like charity should somehow resonate with the will of the like company, it, basically it's people, so they kind of can better distribute these funds. Uh, they provide some curation. They also feel like one of the most important things is that they kind of start thinking about that as well, right? So they kind of think about the causes, they can influence more some particular causes and so on. So basically the DAO is the uh, organization which will provide, uh, where, where like this corporate funds can register, uh, stake some funds, uh, put some, like have some role in curation of those particular charities they trust. And after like somebody like sends crypto to the specific campaign and somehow uh, says that he's the, like mentions that it's for this from this particular company, then there's direct payout from the this fund as well. Uh, so that's the idea. And uh, if I would get this price here, I will put all these funds for this particular program adjusted. Thanks. And we've got three minutes for questions if the judges have any questions. Uh, yeah, so I, I also don't, I haven't uh, thought about that for long, right? But uh, the idea is uh, currently if some charity wants to participate in this program, it's not easy to, to apply for all these big companies. But after they do that, they get lots of like... Uh, funds from from their employees like as a uh, as a gift uh, so they will maximize like really maximize the impact but it's really hard as i say and uh, for uh, like in in this case with crypto you can uh, make the stakes smaller so you can put lower limit but you can give this curation of like good charities really to the in the hands of for example, consortia of this corporation that want to participate in it, or in the hands of the employees themselves. So I haven't done some analysis here, uh, and that's why it can be solved with this just smart contract, just distribution, right? But the curation is hard part where we need some, you know, more uh, complicated governance in DAO. So it, so like if you have this, uh, let's just say it's for employees only, like Coca Cola. Yeah. Decide which charities to donate, and they double it. Mm -hmm. Would they? Would the? So would each company have their own DAO, or would it be like all the companies are aggregating together and they agreed to fix stakeholders? I'm for the latter one, but both are possible, I think. So you see, it is all these companies are gonna put their money in a in a pot together, and then how do they get to choose who yeah. who gets to choose the the charity? No, I think particularly like the the fund uh, from Coca Cola will go only to the charities which were supported by the Coca Cola. But the curation of the overall good uh, charities can be done together. Oh, okay. Okay. So there's a list of like a white listed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Group of charities. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Would they submit proposals for certain initiatives, or is it just that they just get funds? Uh -uh. The charities would they have to submit? It can be a second step, you know, and it can, it can be also not just a general account where all the funds go. Right. They can be just a particular campaign that can be touching this particular employees as well, right? So I'm more for the campaign than rather than general account here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks.
Thank you so much, MG. And just for the folks in the back, uh, just as a temperature check, is the noise upstairs like bo like bothering with the hearing? You, all right, cool, cool. Just making sure. Um, excellent. Well, uh, the next pitch is going to be from Chris with I want to say this is 495. Is that right? Yeah, actually, yeah, it's 451. Oh, 451. Everyone, uh, thanks. This was like a kernel of an idea that I've been brewing and sitting on for like about a year, and so this is a great opportunity to kind of put down a hundred word white paper in my, in my draft email and kind of spell it out. So this is, this is kind of the results of, of that. Can everyone hear? Get closer to the mic. Okay, how about now? Is it better? Closer, closer. Okay, I'm going to eat the mic. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah? Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm going to win this, aren't I? <laughs> um, okay, my dream DAO, it's a democracy DAO. Um, and it's one that would benefit my community. And so what is my community? Well, uh, for about two decades now, I've been part of and participating in uh, global social movements for justice against oppression, against authoritarian regimes, and doing a lot of solidarity work with movements in Greece and in Latin America. And, um, and the way that I've done that over the past two decades is through media and leveraging media to amplify these movements and their goals. And so I'm a journalist. And so, um, that's my profession, outside of this space. And um, there's a book, Foreign, Fahrenheit 451, by um, US author Ray Bradbury. It's a dystopian novel, and the book presents a vision of a US society in the future where books are banned and firemen burn the books. So that book inspired the 451 uh, Unavailable for Legal Reasons status code for the HTTP protocol. And so my dream DAO would aim to protect those domains um, that people struggling around the world for justice would, um, you know, face, they face censorship. And so in my dream DAO, we would um, maybe put bounties on some of these domains and um, the, the, the people involved, the community involved, um, and the selection process is yet to be defined because I've just kind of made this up um, and it shouldn't just be to me. So um, there's a wider discussion to be had. But um, there would be some selection process about which domains, and that would be a democratic process, and the kind of thresholds on that would be set by the organizations and people involved, um, about which one should be mapped over to ENS. Um, and then uh, the idea is that we would also allocate funds to um, those groups that were selected to help build their project and keep it going on the new Web3 platform. And that's my dream deal. Oh, there was a statistic I had, actually, that I wanted to throw in there uh, that I thought was interesting. And that is, um, this year it was reported that 100,000 pages, web pages alone in Turkey uh, were um, banned without proper investigation conducted, without any testimonies being taken. And so this is like the, the scale of the problem in one country. So. That would be, you know, by the participating groups in the in the community in the DAO. I'm not sure what threshold, because I think that's a, a wider discussion um, to be had. So I wouldn't want to prescribe anything myself. How do you theorize about initial token distribution or decision? Um, I think, you know, the incentive would be for those communities. To, that are impacted and facing censorship to want to have tokens and to participate in this. So we reach out to, to them um, initially, maybe, and then hopefully it would spread. But th that would be the, the kind of like the user uh, of this. Do you maybe see them being maintained by journalists locally or almost like a. Thanks. Cheers. Sorry, could you repeat so that? Could you see these domains being maintained by journalists or by everyone in that particular community? This would be a bit tricky because um, I think 
in the ideal world, all these domains would be like have uh, DNS sec on them or something, so we would be able to verify who owned those domains that were initially banned and then be able to transfer the ENS version. Um, but that's not the world we live in right now. So there's still some technical stuff to, to work out there. I've only put my own website on Swarm. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Four, five, one. Next up here is Daniel. And apologies to Daniel. I cannot read the name of the project. Um, I'm terrible at writing. It's okay. You can't do that. If, 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 <laughs> Please. So it's called the perpetual endowment. Let's make, let's Is this all right for you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And please make sure you speak directly into okay. The mic. So it's a method for maximizing the return and benefits on ducks. So for those who don't know, a duck is decentralized altruistic community such as uh, GiveF, Aragon, and uh, yeah, it's good. And uh, I hope you all seen this movie called The uh, Life of Brian by the Monty Python. <laughs> There is this uh, amazing scene, you know, where they go like, what have the Romans ever done for us? And the guy is like, oh, they built the roads, they built the aqueducts, the wine, what we do without that fantastic Italian wine. And so I think the question we should ask in the DAO space is what have the nation states ever done for us? And the answer is very similar. It's they use coercion to fund public goods and public infrastructure. So if a DAO has to compete with a nation state, it should uh, at least, yeah, surpass or be better, you know, than... Uh, the nation state. So I know I'm not allowed to read the slides, but I want to, I, I try to inspire myself from history to find an example of pre nation state funding for public infrastructure. So it's from uh, Dead the First 5,000 Years by uh, David Graeber. So please bear with me 30 seconds. It's good. So he says The key innovation was the creation of what were called the perpetual endowments or inexhaustible treasuries. Say a supporter wished to make a contribution to his or her local monastery. Rather than offering to provide candles for a specific ritual or servants attend to the upkeep of the monastic grounds, she would provide a certain sum of money that would then be loaned out in the name of the monastery at the accepted 15% annual rate. Not bad. The interest on the loan would then be earmarked for that specific purpose. The inexhaustible treasuries were inexhaustible because by continuously lending their money out at interest and never ever touching their capital, they would guarantee effectively risk-free investments. That was the entire point. By doing so, Buddhism, unlike Islam, produced something very much like what we now call corporations, entities that through charming legal fiction, we imagine to be persons just like human beings, but immortal, never having to go through all the human untidiness of marriage, reproduction, informity, and death. To put it in properly medieval terms, they are very much like angels. So I think this is very similar to a Tao, you know, the idea of an entity existing beyond the self. I'm not trying to say that religion is not coercive, this is another point. But so the idea is to connect a Tao to a lending protocol, such as Dharma Protocol, SALT, EFLAN, etc. And so you'd have either the donators to the DAC or appointed uh, reviewers vote on where the loans go. And so there would be loans being made. And once the principal is kind of repaid, it can be put on the side uh, for safety. And you just loan out the interest. So it's like a risk-free investment. So now there's two options. Either you become the banker and you do like a DAO bank and you pay yourself fat dividends. Or you can make a DAC where you fund... Uh, you know, so impact investment, let's say. So either you fund public infrastructure that is blockchain infrastructure or off-chain infrastructure, you can uh, give microloans to farmers, small business people, or you can give a humanitarian, like let's say charity, not as a loan, but really as a, as a gift. And this is very important, and I feel it's a unique use case for DAOs, because in the traditional world, uh, there's a lot of suppression of... Uh, Humanitarian work, like for example in China, Palestine, Turkey, but pretty much every country. If you're a humanitarian worker, you're being chased down. Uh, you're not let to be done your job. You can even be thrown in jail. And so having the ability to finance uh, charitable action, I feel is uh, very powerful. So yeah, I hope you like the idea and coming soon. <laughs> minute and a half. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to make loans that are as collateralized as possible to minimize the down risk and uh, you will use the initial capital 
to basically uh, get high interest in the beginning because these protocols don't have high liquidity, so they're forced, the, the people who borrow are forced to pay a high premium on those loans. And so in, uh, let's say, four or five years, we'd be able to repay the principal and maybe put one or two X the principal on the side in case of a downturn or a series of defaults. So you would basically always have that capital, which becomes this kind of, you know, university endowments, like a Harvard endowment, which is at like $30 billion. So you don't have a model where you're taking risk investments, but you're rather taking uh, more risk-free uh, actions. Do you have any ideas on the governance mechanisms for what, how to choose mm -hmm. what to fund with that interest? Yeah, so that's still to be a saint, so uh, a certain. So it can either be the donators because it's their money, but maybe there are some uh, already existing institutions or some individuals that would be better uh, prepped for that. So I think it really depends on the use case and the kind of loan that you want to give out. Thank you, Daniel. And the next pitch in the Aragon DreamDAO pitch contest is Kem D. Jem. What was your name? Jem. Jem. Yes. With Boardroom Infiltrator. I like your. Yeah, it's good. I like your peaceful, uh, altruistic DAO idea. I will now propose weaponizing the AOs. <laughs> so um, most of the times when we think about uh, the transition towards decentralization, we think about centralized institutions uh, moving towards new governance systems. So how can we make a DAO out of a company or so on? So I started thinking about how can uh, the other way around happen? So like, how can a DAO have uh, legal representation? So like, decentralized to centralized and so on. And then I thought, uh, how can we have embedded relationships of centralized or institutions inside decentralized uh, organizations? So a company being uh, able to vote inside a DAO or uh, vice versa, where a DAO can actually vote inside a company. So that's where weaponization comes in. So uh, my proposal is that we create these boardroom infiltrators where uh, a humanoid, are you with me on this one? Humanoid sits on the board and represents the uh, stakeholders uh, which are usually exposed to the externalities that are uh, subject by the company's decisions, uh, express their opinions and if it's supported by the legal system they can actually veto certain decisions say about environmental uh, impact or displacements and so on. So I hope you don't ask so many rational questions because yeah, I, w I went to bed very late last night. Most time I got. You've got three minutes for questions. Oh boy. Uh, so humanoid, I mean like, yeah, can you just develop this idea further? Is it an actual person? Like yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be even a physical person, but humanoid, I think, is like a, a creepy enough that like the board members would freak out that there's like this weird thing next to them that's like <laughs> speaking of the consensus of the of the stakeholders, wider stakeholders. So you mean what you're doing is um, you are setting up a company on the, on the blockchain, or something like that? No. Like yeah, somehow, somehow the. Infiltrating existing companies, say JP Morgan, we put a human, uh, somehow we managed to put a, uh, uh, a board, new board member, which is say like we get uh, do petitions or something and then uh, JP Morgan succumbs to it and they say, okay, we will give an extra seat for, uh, you know, people who are affected by JP Morgan's ex actions and so on. And so they represent their opinion in boardroom decisions uh, of the wider community. So this can actually go a step further where you can have parliamentary representations of uh, communities. So like you can have a MP, uh, this creepy humanoid uh, representing, you know, certain regions or so. Have you ever heard of the Flux Party? No. So the Flux Party does like this liquid democracy mm -hmm. app where they try to hack 
democracy by electing a person who just listens to their Ah, yeah, I, I know the I know the pirate party from Australia that the guy is pledging that like I will know I will not make any decisions uh, based on my own will. I will always, you know, run the service and uh, you know, make the decisions of the what do you call it, constituents and so on. Yeah, do you feel like that's yeah definitely, but like you can scale this much larger, I think. Yeah. Uh, Buy enough shares in JP Morgan mm. that all of a sudden you're a board member, mm. but you're not the board member. Yeah, exactly. So now is a board mm -hmm. member. Any questions from the audience? <laughs> you got a minute. Sorry. Uh, can I propose a simpler Sure. You're familiar with capacity investor? I'm not. You can take a position within a company. Uh -huh. I see, yeah, but, but see here, I think it's uh, how wide the participation you're aiming at. So like, will you be, for example, like, I would actually like um, people who are like, I don't know, tourists who are affected by an oil spill to be able to represent themselves in the BP board or, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, for on the board of Lockheed Martin, people who are displaced by, you know, um, kind of immigration waves and so on. Thank you, Jen. Next up is the Shasta team with Shasta. Shasta? Hello to everyone. So we are Shasta team, as we said. Uh, our Dream DAO is Shasta, that right now is a simple uh, project uh, uploaded to Rinkaby, but we want to make it a real DAO. So uh, starting with the why, uh, utilities, uh, energy uh, utilities, have been always owned by this monopoly that exists in the electricity sector. But we are, at, we are at a point in the society where these utilities can be on your roof and can be anywhere that, that you want. So like Elon Musk uh, said with Solar City. So if we imagine a world like Elon Musk with Solar City that can, that anyone can be a producer and also a consumer, and that you can sell your access uh, to the, that you produce in your house to the others in the neighborhood, we are solving one of the biggest problems that we face with uh, the electricity sector and in the countries where exists a lot of poor with energy, like in South America or like, well, in Spain also, there is a lot of poor energy. Um, and that's why uh, what we are creating is Shasta. Shasta is a market where we um, uh, connect producers, people that create energy with solar panels, with any kind of energy, with people that uh, want to buy this energy straight from that provider using a, uni a unique model through a decentralized autonomous organization that allows this connection between these two people that want to make that. Uh, right now, we are facing with the problems of connecting uh, the real world with the virtual world, and that's why we are to make accessible to anyone, uh, to any hardware like Grid Plus or like Power Ledger, like uh, this kind of, of people that is creating uh, the connections of smart grids, and connect this to this DAO that we want to create and empower anyone in the world to really uh, be a producer without any kind of bureaucracy like that exists at the moment to be a marketer because being a marketer, uh, for example, in the case of Spain and in some countries of South America, is a very, um, a, a process that takes a lot of time to be a producer and starting selling energy. And also, one of the things that we have thought a lot about uh, the energy sector is how to establish the energy price. And we think that uh, that DAOs can make a lot of sense at the moment to uh, take a lot of people, that the, the actual producers and consumers, that they decide which is the energy price, really, that uh, have to be in this marketplace, and not the marketers that decide the, the energy price that they want. Thank you very much. And right now you can make any question that you want. How does the matching happen? Uh, right now, um, um, 
Right now we don't have uh, any matching solution, but uh, we plan to make uh, an automated solution so uh, so the users uh, can uh, uh, select what is the source of the energy that they want. Uh, if they want clean energy or they want more uh, storage energy, and uh, uh, offers the the best uh, matching solution for for them. So it depends uh, also in, in the geological locating of the users. So. Mm, yeah, we need to think about the the matching part, but uh, we're making progress with it. So yeah, so uh, referring what uh, David said, uh, right now we have built um, right now the first MVP that we have created includes a filtering part where there is, as David said, uh, different sorts of energy. There is different amounts of energy uh, that the user can filter and matching with the uh, uh, part with the with the part that the producers have applied to the to our network and uh, the user have the ability to choose the ones that fits better. But our long-term uh, solution is to make as automated as possible because uh, the real, the final user doesn't want to be each day checking which is the best, sol the best, uh, the best offer, and because it doesn't make any sense. And we want that the user checks how much uh, he has earned uh, the f at the last of the month and checking if uh, has earned money um, selling more energy than he has um, bought, and in that, in that sense. What decisions does the DAO make exactly? Um, <coughs> it could be different kind of decisions. For example, you could choose when you, the different communities that they join with an organization that they want to um, exchange with the energy, they can be, they can decide with a DAO in a democratic and a decentralized way. For example, decisions like the price of the energy, this one is like the most important, but also they may want to decide which source, which different sources of energy they want to exchange with. For example, they only want to exchange with re um, renewable energies. Or maybe if they want to add a new consumer or a new producer to the organization to make it bigger. Thank you, Shasta. Next up, we have Bridge Dow with the project Tomo. <laughs> or maybe it's Tomo with Bridge Dow. But... <laughs> Tomo. Well, I, yeah. No, it says Nate. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, my fault. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Let me just record this. Um, yeah, thank you very much. My name is Tomislav. Can I? Do I do this? Mm. Okay. So, um, my, my um, dream DAO is a DAO that will enable any other DAO to uh, send, receive, and hold fiat. And how do we do this? So, we have a decentralized network of incentivized nodes, which are individual people like you or companies who have bank accounts. And DAO is our user and he wants to get paid by a certain person or a certain person wants to pay in fiat. So he will just ask us, um, can we get this done? And we'll tell, yeah, sure, there is this note, uh, there is this bank account that they have. Just tell your uh, user to pay, a uh, customer to pay to this bank account. And uh, when the user pays to the bank account, this money stays on the bank account of our node. And the node waits for our message, which will tell him, uh, okay, now transact this money to some other bank account uh, because he is going to act on behalf of the DAO. So DAO decided to spend this money. Um, how do we um, mo uh, uh, get nodes to participate? Well, they get feeds from transactions. And how do we get them not to run away with, with the money that's paid to their account? Well, we collateralize them. They put stake in cryptocurrency into our smart contracts. Um, this is already, uh, so because it's very decentralized, we don't have one bank account. So for banks, it's very painful to shut them down because they will actually be kicking out their customers. And we want to make this uh, to be very like as trustless as possible. And it's hard for bank or anybody to uh, shut, shut those accounts down. And only reasons why they would shut these down is for political reasons. There's nothing illegal about this. And in our first implementation, what we will do is we will enable 
um, this service only for those DAOs, DApps, and smart contracts, which are selling the real um, accountable services like ENS domains or something else, which is completely legal service. Um, also, what is important to say is um, for this, the software is open source, and it, it, although our first implementation is focusing on fiat, uh, somebody else can actually create their own implementation, which can then uh, be used to purchase um, more complicated kinds of uh, assets like uh, real estate and things like that. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, so, how do we avoid uh, money laundering? Um, so, we only do deal with fiat transactions. So, these fiat transactions are coming from customers to our nodes and then from our nodes to contractors of DAOs. Um, any money that's already in the banking system is supposed to be filtered out by those banks. So, we, we don't deal with cash, we don't deal with crypto or anything like that. Uh, only the other counter service that is happening is the actual service that is given. So it's not even exchanging cryptocurrency for fiat. It's, it's not exchanging cryptocurrency. No, it's not exchanging cryptocurrency for fiat. So then it, let's walk through this. So someone sells an ENS domain. Yes. And they receive fiat in return? Yes. And the person who is buying it sends fiat to the DAO and then the DAO sends fiat to them or? So, um, how it works. Uh, a DAO owns a ENS domain and decides to sell this domain to a customer. So customer can pay, can pay for example, 500 euros for this domain to one of our bank accounts. The money will stay in our system, in, our, in one of those bank accounts, and we will have the balance uh, available for the DAO, which will say, say, you have 500 euros and you can spend them. And DAO will decide at one point that they want to spend it, and they will just tell us the bank account of the of their contractor. And who owns the bank account? Uh, our nodes, so those are physical persons or companies, institutions, banks, um, any any anything anybody who can actually open a bank account can be a node. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tomo. <laughs> Next up is, and just for time, we have we have four left. Um, next up is Kyle with General Governance. Hey everybody, I'm Kyle. Um, so the idea I had was uh, not much of like a uh, like an idea for this like specific DAO, but actually a structure for General DAO Governance. Um, so what there would be is there would be these this idea of cycles and we'll just for our uh, DAO take a cycle as a month on the first day of the first month there would be an ICO that would just be mintable at a certain price set by the um, <clears throat> set by whoever created the DAO first um, one token uh, minted from this DAO is one vote either a yes or a no vote <clears throat> in a month long period um, the people have the ability to submit proposals, uh, and, and during that, only during that first day can people buy the tokens uh, in the cycle. Uh, so people can submit proposals, but they're all private proposals uh, until the last day of the month. Um, the that last day of the first month would not have anything, but the, when the second cycle comes around, all of these proposals would be up for a vote by these token holders. Now, how the voting would work is just one, one token, one vote. So yes or no, the proposals are yes or no based. And people will pay a set amount to, uh, pay, uh, to, <laughs> to submit a proposal. So what I'm trying to do here is make it to where uh, you can actually, so people can't pr mint these tokens um, based upon a vote that they see that is coming up. They'll have to. Uh, they'll actually mint based on like the value they see in the DAO or like a proposal they want to submit later on, and uh, and it, um, what like the so there's a commit period during the 
previous cycle and the reveal period during this cycle. An ICO at the beginning of the month, based on the price, it could have changed based on the voting of the previous month, the ICO price, um, just minting. And at the end of the uh, and at yeah at the uh, end of the month that closes out voting and the the proposals are decided upon. So, <laughs> there you get that. Yeah. Oh, uh, one more thing: you can um, delegate your tokens to someone else if you if you believe in their. Uh, as like sort of a representative of your tokens. Yeah. So is there, is it just one project that wins the whole project? Oh, no. So uh, any of the, no, it's uh, just based on proposals. So like which proposals get voted on. So like, uh, at, like 70 proposals could have been voted yes in favor, 30 no. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm still missing this ICO part and right. where, where it all fits in. Yeah, yeah. So um, just just so that more people can start participating in the uh, in the DAO, but not so that people can buy tokens based on um, the the uh, proposals up for auction. So we're just going to have one proposal at the beginning of or one ICO at the beginning of each cycle, so more people can get in, and the price may have gone up based on the previous proposals of the last cycle. Uh, so that like more people can get in on the uh, DAO if they believe it has value. Uh, meanwhile, they can't um, buy, like a, a, a negative entity can't like see that there's a proposal up that would completely destroy the DAO, buy up a ton of tokens and vote on it right then and there. And would you have a quorum and 51% for passing proposals? Or? Uh, no, it would just, uh, for, it would, there would be no quorum. It would just be based on uh, token vote. So tokens go in and then money goes to that proposal? Uh, well, if the, if the proposal has money in the proposal, yes. So like, how do you imagine these proposals, yes. like what do you imagine these proposals to be like? Like maybe a concrete example. Um, sure, it could be like um, buy this business or um, you know, sell off this asset that we hold. It could be literally anything that a modern day corporation has, yeah. So it's general governance, so it could be like for a government, it could be for a corporation, it could be for anything. Yeah. That's time. Okay. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kyle. Uh, next up is John. Introducing John. <laughs> hey guys, uh, sorry, I get a little nervous on the talking. Um, so uh, I don't like management, and uh, yeah, so I don't like management. So um, that's why I made this thing. Oh, started to think about how to make it. Uh, so hold on, maybe go my notes. Okay, yeah, so um, I don't like management. I consider it adult babysitting. So the <laughs> concept of a DAO is uh, really good because it provides structure to um, a company or an organization or, yeah, decentralized organization. That's what it is. So what it is, it's a framework for non-technical individuals and developers to work together. And um, work is defined in a plain language called uh, Gherkin, and it's machine verifiable. Um, this is needed in order to automate pay, um, pay, payouts so uh, the system is something you know uh, along the lines of um, bounties network or uh, Gitcoin or um, whatever task-based freelance website. Uh, so uh, the first step is that features get written in Gherkin, and these are some given when then scenarios that you define features in. Uh, so for example, if you're designing an ATM, you do. Uh, you set the context, so given uh, I have an account at the bank, uh, then, uh, when I try to um, uh, withdraw money or when I try to put my card in, uh, uh, and I type the correct PIN code, then I can take cash, something like that. So you define um, the features, and the reason for this is you want to remove ambiguity um, from the requirements. Uh, the next step is uh, test writing, um, sorry, uh, work estimation. So there's a marketplace um, where the task will actually get um, estimated by, you know, a bunch of uh, hopefully more skilled people. 
and then it goes with the test writing, um, worker assignment. Um, so uh, to avoid r multiple people working on the same thing at one point in time to produce the same result, um, people should stake uh, in order to get assigned a task. So they stake 100% of whatever the work estimation was based on multiplied by the, the, the rate um, that was set. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Um, and then the person starts working, and uh, if they go uh, beyond the estimated time, then it starts burning their funds, and eventually they get slashed, um, uh, per, perhaps uh, 30% of uh, overtime or something. Um, there's a concept with the uh, testing servers because you need to, um, you don't want to rely on one person um, saying yes, you've completed the work. Uh, so you'd have uh, three testing servers, uh, one that's owned by the project owner, one owned by, uh, let's say, a foundation or whatever, and the other one um, is on the local dev um, uh, computer for the developer. Uh, they all submit the, um, uh, let's say, hashes or whatever of uh, 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 of the test, the, the test results, um, and uh, uh, once we can verify that uh, 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 all the tests pass, then the worker gets the payout, and uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. Oh. Oh, so this could also, it could be built on top of bounties network, it, um, so like, uh, uh, in the sense of not doing rework, um, it will be better not to just create like think um, l like have it as a plugin for things that can um, that already have tasks on it already. So Gitcoin bounties, it could actually live on top of that. Yeah. Are there specific applications for this that you think would be better suited than others? Um, so definitely um, coded work. I haven't figured out how um, like more subjective stuff like design um, uh, could be integrated yet, um, unless you use something like a design framework or like a design system, um, where most things are kind of going to that anyway. So you start seeing applications start looking more similar um, because they have a design system already. Um, so maybe the next 10, 15 years, uh, when that is just like the standard to have a design framework, then um, design is good. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Johns, with Peak Shift. All right. Last, sec second to last is going to be Beltran with Stealth Dow. You want to go last? Yes, you can go last. Um, which means that the actual second to last pitch for the night is Jay with Share With Me. Um, I want to apologize first because I didn't really think of designing for humanoids. So I'm just going to exclude humanoids and only humans are involved in this style. So um, I think that sometimes people, they overcomplicate the situation and they, they, they think they have to design for a, a crypto economic incentive mechanism. But I think that human beings are incentivized by many, many different things. Uh, for example, like a Dogecoin, you buy that because it's fun. You don't buy it because you think you're going to make money off of it, probably. Hey. Um, <laughs> Um, and I, I think one of the real motivating incentives for people is passion. So I want to try to take advantage of people's passion. So uh, as an example, maybe I'm very passionate about educating people about environmental issues or something like that. So I'm going to do that no matter what anyone says. I'm going to spend time, energy, and money to educate people about environmental issues. So my DAO would have a function called uh, Submit Invoice. And at the end of each month, I'm going to submit the cost. It's going to have two parameters. One is IPFS hash, and another is exchange rate that I will accept for the cost that I've just taken on. So maybe I spend $1,000 of my time, energy, and money educating people about the environment. And I'm going to submit an IPFS hash of a copy of those invoices. And I'm going to say, I'll accept $197 per Ether for that cost. And then I just go on. And I don't care if anybody pays me because I'm passionate I'm going to do that. Next month I get $2,500 and I submit that with a hash and an exchange rate. 
And then I'm now what happens is I'm incentivized to go out and find people to help me share the expense of that, my passion. And I want to find passionate people about the same thing. And maybe I could, there's another function called pay invoice. So they're going to come along and ex, maybe they'll, maybe it's identified by number. They're going to pay invoice number 300. And their exchange rate, because it's now six months later, is $300 or maybe it's $50 each or whatever. And then um, they submit, 50, I'll pay $50 per, per uh, ether. So now I've recouped some part of my expense, maybe not all of my expense, but at least some part. Uh, but at any time, more people can come and submit further towards that invoice. And they can even overpay the invoice if they think that I'm doing really good work and they want to support me to extract my own income or something like that. And that would work for any number of different people. You could have a map of um, submitted invoices versus paid invoices. And uh, it would just uh, be the responsibility of the person submitting the invoice to find people to help pay them. So that's my DAO. I think I think a lot of times what happens is people build DAOs and they they raise all this money and then they have proposals and then they have to vote on proposals right. and that gets overcomplicated a little bit. And um, I think this is I'm going to do this anyway. I'm submitting my invoice. If you want to pay me, I'm so happy. And what happens I think over time, if as it gets bigger perhaps, is more and more people are more and more incentivized to help pay the invoice because. If uh, you get a thousand people paying two dollars, that's the same as one person paying two thousand dollars. So it incentivizes you to go find you evangelize the uh, the DAO as well. How do you people? I don't know. Give it. I don't, my experience has been people that want to pay for work that's already been done. How do you? I would disinvite them from my DAO. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I'm flipping it upside down. I'm, I'm, I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. I'm going to go educate the public about environment. I don't care if I get paid because I'm passionate and I want to do this. So I invite people who want to do it. And, they'll, and those type of people are not the kind of people that are going to be helpful to this DAO. So I really would. I'd disinvite them. We we are pushing right up on the time that that would that would cut into the DJ set and I would have to ask the DJs if that's okay. Luis, do you want to hear two extra pitches? I, I'm sorry to put pressure on you, but okay. All right, Luis wants to hear two more pitches after this, so um, we'll make it happen. We'll make the dream DAOs happen. Um, and. You want to go last, last, like actually last. All right. So next, next up is Lorelai with Unicorn DAC. Welcome, Lorelai. Okay. Hello. I'm Lorelai, um, and the Unicorn DAC is an experiment that answers the question of as decentralization people. They want to put that out into the world with money, governments, whatever. How do we bring decentralization into our own organizations? How we relate person to person, how we decide what works, work gets done and prioritized in our projects. So this is a governance experiment where uh, everyone who is a unicorn in this unicorn DAC uh, is allotted well, for us, we're going with 600 euro per week, and they're allowed to uh, claim up to 150 of that for themselves as sort of a basic income for upholding the project in the community. And the other 450 is to delegate to other milestones that people within the project are working on. So this is kind of in coalescence with Gibbeth. 
um, where you can create milestones for the work you're going to do for the organization. Then people are allowed to donate uh, Ether to it. Um, so this would take that like decision making power that like even in organizations where we're like, yeah, decentralize all the things still there's like one person at the top or a couple of people who really are influential on prioritizing what work gets done when. But this would take that and spread it out to all these unicorns. And those unicorns are onboarded through a process of kind of agreeing to like the bylaws and values of this project, their alignment and their commitments. Um, it would be really awesome to have this as an Aragon DAO. I think it would work really well and just make things a lot easier. Um, and that's our dream. Uh, that's my dream DAO. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> They're not really considered managers, right? Like these are just people who uh, work with this project and they're highly dedicated, highly involved. They put a lot of time towards it so much that they understand what's going on in all the ecosystem. They know what work is being done by different people and they see a trajectory. And they're like, I wanna nudge this in this direction by delegating some of my unicorn DAC allowance to you know to fund your article this week that you're going to publish on medium i think people really need to know about this so it's not they're not managers right like this is a flat system so they go through an onboarding process which the process just selects people i mean anyone can apply to it but the onboarding process includes getting advocates two different people who are current unicorns um, who would be your sponsors kind of and make sure that um, that you would be welcomed in after you go through the onboarding process and they they know your work they they um, you commit to them uh, and there's someone that you can check in with along the way of like if you're getting lost with your work or you're not doing a good job this is a person that you can check in with right so we become each other's managers in that way and the donations you said they would be able to get donations. How are they done? Each of the unicorns or contributions? Do that 600 euros? Yeah, so 600 euros. So each week you get 600 euros into your account. So you would have your kind of profile as a unicorn. And then up to 150 of that you can take for yourself. Like, hey, I've been doing a great job on these little projects and just understanding what's going on in the whole galaxy. Um, or maybe you're like, oh, this week I didn't do that much. I'm going to spend the whole 600 delegating to other people who I think worked harder than me this week. Does that make sense? Thank you so much, Lorelai. And then the second to last, really, for real, for real, <laughs> we love you, but we got to move on. Second to last talk is Jeff with Reinventing Human Organization. I hope Jeff is still here. Put him on the spot. Jeff, is Jeff here? Is Jeff in the house? Run real quick. Would you? Well, Lorelai, is that is that a no? Okay. All right. Beltran is up with. Okay, just do it. Beltran. Beltran. I'm guessing I cannot pitch more than one idea, right? Because I'm a dreamer and I have like nine ideas here or eleven. So, so I'm gonna go meta on this and I'm gonna have you vote on the title of the idea that you like the best. So I'm gonna go through the, the titles and you vote. <laughs> so, Alliance for Mass Adoption DAO, one. Research DAO. Community Fund DAO, these are serious kind of. More experimental, Family DAO. Emerg em emergency Bankrupting Company DAO. KYC DAO. <laughs> 
common sense DAO <laughs> or parliamentary uh, member ejector DAO. <laughs> Skynet safe button DAO. Dream DAO pitch judging DAO. <laughs> That's meta. And design DAO. Okay, so just kidding. Alliance for mass adoption DAO, research DAO, community DAO, and family DAO. Which one do you want to hear? Family? Family. 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 Okay, we'll see. <laughs> we can have a session later. <laughs> All right, family DAO. There was a. Uh, think so I'm going to kind of improvise but the idea is we are trying to coordinate together with uh, with the DAOs and it also assumes responsibility and we want uh, to have families where kids and larger members also take responsibility so maybe the family agrees to have certain decisions uh, taken through through a DAO maybe there is transparency also on how uh, certain um, choices are made and the economic uh, problems of a family are, are, are shown so that the kids are also brought into this idea of, hey, you are participating. Even if you are three years old, you have no idea of the world, you still have voice, which is what we kind of want to do in the decentralized society. And teaching them, of course, the dad or the mother will later do whatever they want. But uh, the idea is to, to experiment with, uh, with DAOs that have maybe tiny nucleus, or maybe they can grow uh, where we then add a side family DAO that have two different uh, uh, objectives or side uh, processes, but then maybe they come and come together and take decisions together. So two DAOs, two members of family could have little parts. Yes? What? You have a question. How yes. Will we know, uh, how will we avoid the kids civil attacking the? <laughs> <laughs> well, so are we gonna KYC the? <laughs> no, the the KYC was to get everybody KYC through a DAO, but okay, the, we 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 don't care because uh, supposedly you know each other. <laughs> Uh, that's a good. Uh, that's a good idea. Let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, the kid uh, fork. Yes, fork a family. Fork a DAO. That's true. You fork a DAO. Maybe you you vote and maybe you you have a prediction market. Let's see. I will be happier with my th parent or whatever. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So it was a pretext uh, to to think about uh, different types. Yeah. No, I would say everybody is uh, one, one person, one vote. A family is a family. <laughs> yeah, but what about the dog? What about if a family has six kids? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Two wolf is no? One yes. For one wolf is yes, two votes is no. So it's just... 30 seconds. Yeah, questions? It was crazy, I know. <laughs> They were serious ones, but they voted, you know, so I have to go. <laughs> I mean, why have a DAO and a family instead of just having a conversation at the uh, Yes, exactly, exactly. To, to, to experiment with the, the tools and to have the sense that you have a voice because probably you can decide together that certain decisions made by the DAO, even if you don't agree, are taken and executed so that you show that you have voice uh, even otherwise it's a tradition yes okay what if like uh, one of the things is like dad stops drinking right uh, <laughs> yes. he doesn't end up stop drinking like the dad, that that wasn't resolved is, is there some stake resolved in that or something that's a good idea. Maybe there is uh, some uh, uh, staking and slashing for the father as well. All right, yes. that's time folks. Big hand to both your hands. The family Dow. That was, that was great. Uh, so the judges and I are going to take a few minutes to, to tally up all the scores. Um, feel free to chat amongst yourselves, but we will. I will be back with an announcement for of the winner and the runner-up winner uh, in just a, a few minutes. So thank you.
All right, folks. The moment you all have been waiting for has arrived. Clap once if you can hear me. Clap twice if you can hear me. Clap three times if you can hear me. And stop talking, please, because we've got an important announcement to make. Woo! All right. I'll make this quick. The winner of the first Aragon Dream Dow Pitch Contest is... Daniel! Is Daniel here? <laughs> Go get Daniel! <laughs> We'll we'll have to make it suspenseful. <laughs> you have to wait. Daniel in the house. Woo! <laughs> Daniel with perpetual endowment. Congratulations, Daniel. You won first place. Whoa. And second place runner-up winner of the first Aragon Dream Dow Pitch Contest is, yes, that, Lorelei Unicorn Dow. Congratulations. And because we love everyone who applied uh, to, to pitch tonight and, and gave shared their hearts with us tonight and their dreams uh you're all also going to get 100 a and t so um <laughs> thank you all for participating in the first aragon dream dow pitch contest um if, if if you were if you signed up and you were not coming through kickback uh please come talk to me so i can get uh your contact information otherwise uh i'm just going to send the 100 a and t to your kickback address um and if there's a reason i shouldn't do that you should also come come speak to me because <laughs> i don't want the a t to get lost uh, to the blockchain so that that's it uh for you all um just check check your wallets i guess yeah i, 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 yeah, I wanted to thank uh, aragon not just for i mean tonight it's super nice but also with uh gem we're part of this project called pando that is supported by uh, aragon grant so yeah, thank you again. Yes, much love to all the uh, Nest Eaglets in the room and, and to everyone else from the Aragon community who came out to support us tonight. This is awesome. Uh, we're going to get the DJs going, bump some music until like 10 p.m., so about an hour and 10 minutes, um, uh, at least in terms of bumping, bumping, right? And then we're going to turn it down to like a more like chill vibe after that because uh, we don't want the neighbors to call the cops on us. And uh, but we're going to be here partying uh, and chatting and socializing and bonding until uh, midnight uh, about when we'll start to you know ask people to go home and get some sleep because tomorrow is the last day of DevCon. Yeah.